Velvet Buzzsaw is the highly anticipated movie to hit Netflix and consists of the reunion of Jake Gyllenhaal and director of Nightcrawler, Dan Gilroy. It's Netflix's latest big budget movie since Bird Box and my guess is that it's going to take the platform by storm. This indie artsy horror movie has a lot of questions left at the end of the movie and it leaves you wondering why everything just happened. Well, in this video, I'll clear what the ending means for the movie and why most of the deaths occurred. So, let's find out. Before I go ahead, make sure you go over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. So, without further ado, I'm BrainPilot, and here is Velvet Buzzsaw Ending Explained. Just to let you know, there will be spoilers. Obviously. I'll start with the synopsis. So, in this movie, you're primarily following art critic Morph and Josefina, who aspires to be a rich and famous art dealer. With the discovery of her dead neighbor, Josefina takes control over all of the art from the neighbor. Even though she was warned not to take it by her landlord, she decided to anyway. He stated how the neighbor, who is eventually found to be Vitral Dees, even tried destroying the art himself, meaning that he wanted nobody to know it even existed. He wanted it all gone upon his death. This led Josefina to go and show the art to Critic Morph and she was then going to go on and sell it. This is all without her boss knowing. This started a fixation into the life of Vitral Dees and his work for Morph. Before long, Josefina's boss Fedora was onto her and this then led the pair to join forces and start selling the work at extortionary prices. But the people were willing to buy. From this moment on, this is where the movie takes a turn for the worse. For the characters at least anyway. Why? Well, due to the research that Morph is doing, he finds out all of the history behind the deceased artist Vitral Dees. Some of the information that he finds out starts way back when Dees was a child. It comes to light that his mother and sister were killed in a fire that burnt down their house when he was younger. From that, he then got taken away from his father due to the fact that he was abusive. He then went into the army and served for a few years until he went back home and murdered his father slowly over the course of a few days. From here, he was then put in a psychiatric unit for 20 years, right up until he was released. And then he returned to LA and worked as a janitor. It was here that he lived off the grid and didn't have a mobile phone, friends or anything like that. People steered clear from him due to suspecting that he was a dangerous person. He led a private life. Upon this discovery, it was also found that Dees would put his blood into all of the paintings that he created. Whilst Morph was looking into the life of Dees, there had been a lot of suspicious activity occurring. And whilst this was happening, many people had viewed his art, purchased the art, and in all honesty, not really cared for the art. For example, the first person we see touched by Dees' art was Bryson, the maintenance and repair man. He was fixated with his art and when he accidentally damaged some of Dees' work, he was set on fire. Whilst looking for help, he was murdered by a group of monkeys that were in a painting. They pulled him in and he was never seen again. The next person to die at the hands of Dees was John. John again was only interested in making money from other people's art and exhibiting art that would make him the most money possible. As well, after hiring a private investigator to dig deeper into Dees' life, once he was going to release the information to the press, he was murdered in his own exhibition by a piece of art. Following the news of John, we were given the death of museum creator gone art advisor Gretchen. She seeked out Dees' paintings for a client and was interested in making as much money as possible and having as much power as possible as well. This didn't end too well for her. She wanted the sphere to be in place at the exhibition. And well, she ended up becoming part of the exhibition. This is due to the fact the sphere cut her own arm off and she bled to death. After this, we had the joint death of Morph and his on and off lover Josefina. Morph ended up having his neck snapped by a piece of art that we saw at the start of the movie. This happened whilst he was trying to get rid of his collection and undo the wrongs that he had carried out. And Josefina was killed by becoming a piece of art as well. This was whilst she was trying to get hold of Fedora on the phone and she left her current lover after he said he didn't want to work with Fedora and hit the big time anymore. Speaking of Fedora, she was the final one to take the hit from the cursed art. We see her the night before getting anxious about her piece of art that she has on her bedroom wall. 
The painting depicts a woman crouching on the ground with her cat beside her, with two shadows being cast on the floor in front. After removing it from her wall, she believes to experience paranormal activity. Following that evening, she decides to remove all of the art from her house. The next morning, whilst hiring removal people to come in and remove every single piece of art, she believed that she was rid of the curse from Dees's work. However, she was not. She seemed to mimic the painting that she removed from her wall, and that's when us as the audience see that she's left the only permanent piece of art on her shoulder, and that was her velvet buzzsaw tattoo. The saw on her tattoo ultimately started spinning round and ended up killing her. But why did this happen to all of these people? Well, it became apparent early on in the movie that Deese's art had the power of captivating people and looking like it almost possesses people. However, that was not the case. Deese's art contained his own blood and in turn, this then cast a spirit out there to whomever owned a piece of his work. Whoever owned a piece of Deese's art and did not appreciate art itself and was only interested in personal gain or profit, then another form of artwork would kill them. For example, Bryson was killed by the painting of the monkeys after damaging work by Dees. John was killed on the set in one of his exhibitions after planning on releasing information that would raise the value of Dees's work. Gretchen was killed by the sphere after purchasing art and asserting her dominance. Morph was killed by the robot after compromising his integrity as a prolific art critic and damaging someone else's career, due to Josephine saying so. Josephina was killed by the art gallery that never existed due to only being interested in making money and not caring for art as a form. And Fedora was killed by the tattoo on the back of her shoulder because all she cared about was making money from his collection. Art is in the eye of the beholder and it's something that should be appreciated. It seems as though Dees didn't believe in monetizing art, or his art at least. And when, as a form, it was disrespected and not appreciated, that's when the spirit would take form and cause detrimental effects. For example, Damrish was a true artist and didn't care about working with Fedora and releasing his artwork to a global audience. He wasn't interested in profit or personal gain as much as the others, and he ended up surviving despite being captivated by Deese's art. As Fedora said at the start of the movie, this has all been done since someone charged a bone for a cave painting. She believes that what she's doing isn't wrong. Deese just clearly didn't agree. As well, in the final scene, there's a morbid thought. The homeless have their hands on some of Deese's work due to the truck that Bryson was in crashing. And this means that they're selling it on the street to the public for as little as $5. This means one of three things. One, the people who are purchasing the art are going to be affected by it due to the fact that they're in possession of it. Or two, the homeless man will be succumbed to the effects of the spirit due to making money off of it, but the public will be spared due to the fact that they're appreciating it as a form. Or three, they will both end up in bad positions due to the homeless man selling the art and the public owning it, which are both things that Dees didn't want. I think the ending's down to interpretation. You can choose to believe that the paintings are going to go on to cause more harm, or you can choose to believe that all of the suffering is over. But I think it's the first one. Dees doesn't want his art out there, and it's not been destroyed. And that is where the fundamental problem of the future lies. People will still be viewing his art, and that's something that he didn't want. So I suppose the moral of the story is, Appreciate art for what it is, and don't try and make money off it, because if you do, the spirit will come and get you. I'll be releasing a review of the movie within the next few days, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But if you can't wait until then, then head over to my letterbox, where I've rated the film. Visit my profile, and you'll see not only Velvet Buzzsaw, but many other movies that I've rated. If you want to say in what videos you see on this channel, then over on the community page, I've started releasing polls. Head over, take a vote, and see what videos you want to see. As well, if you want to support the channel in a different way, then I've recently set up a Patreon. Over there, you can get your hands on some exclusive content. Take a look and see what you think. What do you think of the movie Velvet Buzzsaw? Did you enjoy it? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.